Greetings and a warm welcome. I'm Mimi Kaiser, faculty in the Department of Global Health here at Rollins School of Public Health. I'm narrating this webinar and slides for you on religion and health at Emory as a representative of both the Interfaith Health Program here at Rollins and is also part of what is a university-wide religion and public health collaborative. While I'm the one speaking, um, I also have many colleagues I hope you will get a chance to meet, to work with, and learn from during your time at Emory. What I plan to cover for you is to first introduce you to religion and health at Emory and give you a sense of its history, its distinctive, and its breadth. I will then describe some of the learning opportunities, meaning courses um, and also events outside of the classroom as well. The focus, though, of the presentation will be on the certificate in religion and health. And then um, finally, I will uh, describe to you how to stay connected, how to stay engaged in learning within the network of students, faculty and staff working at this intersection here at Emory. An important part of the history um, and also current Emory context is the Interfaith Health Program, which was formed in uh, 1992 at the Carter Center. Uh, the goal of the program has been to align the strengths of the faith community with public health, to eliminate health disparities in transformed communities. Before moving to the School of Public Health in 1999, the scope of its work was primarily domestic in the US, while now it is engaged both nationally and also globally. Um, I hope you will visit the website up, up at the top here, ihpemory.org, not .edu, in the near future and, and learn more. Um, you will find in the archive a rich repository of what we boldly call the beginnings of the faith and health movement. Right now, our website um, and the Religion and Public Health Collaborative sites are both under reconstruction. So uh, push a little bit of a pause button, but please um, remember to visit um, the sites um, for further information. I'm going to be covering the highlights and you'll, have, you'll find more um, on the websites. The Religion and Public Health Collaborative was created in 2006 as part of the university's strategic visioning and planning process that was occurring at that time. It has become an important and enduring Emory distinctive, linking the college, the Laney Graduate School, public health, nursing, theology, law, and medicine. This university-wide umbrella supports interdisciplinary scholarship, teaching, in community service and partnerships. The website also noted at the top, the address um, rphcemory.org is also under reconstruction, but please um, remember that and I hope you'll make use of that. While this slide, I'm sure, is not easy to read, um, uh, I, we felt it was important um, in our work um, um, within the university to show the richness of its history and how it's grown um, over, the, over time. So I wanna share with you some of the highlights from this history to give you a sense of this breadth of what's been built and the repository that you'll be able to um, construct unique informative learning experiences from while you're here at Emory. The earliest time um, uh, at, in the history of the collaborative really was in 2006, sort of, kind of uh, leading up to the formation of it was um, the development of the religion and health um, certificate, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit. But the most formative part um, of our work um, as uh, interdisciplinary uh, scholars and colleagues here was the work we began with what's called the African Religious Health Assets Program and a WHO funded initiative um, that looked at um, further understanding of religious health assets as it pertains to HIV AIDS um, in South Africa, Zambia, and Lesotho. That was some of the formative early work um, in the collaborative. In 2008 and into 2010, um, PhD uh, uh, 
lines and roles were funded here. So in addition to the certificate for uh, master's work, there began to be funding and support um, in the university for doctoral work as well. In 2009 um, is when the dual degree program was formed. So um, students coming here to get a master's in divinity or theological studies could also um, fit in a year um, of uh, a, an expedited MPH um, to get that along with their theological studies. Um, and that, that initiative has grown over the years. In 2009, that was when um, Dr. Ellen Eidler, um, a, a pretty renowned sociologist, um, was um, brought to Emory and established in a chair's position and as director of the Religion and Public Health Collaborative. She is uh, uh, in the sociology department in the college, but is jointly appointed. She has a, um, a secondary appointment in the Department of Epidemiology here. So she's been leading um, the Religion and Public Health Collaborative since 2009 here at Emory. And uh, you'll hear more about her and in, in, um, further what I have to share with you in, the, in um, the slides, as well as meeting her, I hope, soon. In 2010 and 11, um, another example of some of the unique interdisciplinary opportunities here, we began um, uh, an international course along with global field experiences that provided opportunities for theology students, public health students, um, master's in development program students. So a diverse array, array of students <clears throat> across the graduate level schools to uh, do coursework with an uh, uh, academic partner of ours in um, Kenya, um, and then do um, integrative field experiences along with bookend um, week-long times in the classrooms with Kenyan students. Um, students have also, um, there's been, uh, you'll hear, I'm sure, in your early time here at Rollins, hear about the Global Health Institute, um, Emory's Global Health Institute and their field team field scholars program. And we've often um, created opportunities for there to be an inter interdisciplinary mix around religion and um, public health um, in the work of these teams that are funded out of the Emory um, Global Health um, Institute. Throughout the, the years um, that the program, the collaborative has been building and expanding its work, deepening at Emory, We've had a number of lecture series. Um, often we'll bring in an outside speaker for a large university-wide and public um, address and then follow that on a second day by a workshop where we're able to bring together students and faculty from across the university to delve more deeply into the ideas and areas of expertise of the um, outside speaker. Um, but the hallmark of um, of the uh, uh, collaborative under the leadership of Dr. Ellen Eidler was um, and continues to be um, a text um, on religion as a social determinant of public health. And this is really um, has shaped um, uh, Emory's distinctiveness around not religion um, as an individual practice related to medicine, um, or uh, purely to medicine in response to disease, but to have a more macro um, social um, framework and sort of anchoring a way of understanding the breadth of religion and its impact on health as a social determinant of public health. So this text um, uh, brought together um, 36 Emory authors and, and Dr. Ellen Eidler um, supported the, she was the editor of the text, but also facilitated um, two years of um, interdisciplinary faculty seminars with where the faculty were developing and shaping their ideas for this text. And the, the nature of the text is that it's um, kind of giving an overarching frame for thinking about, and it's organized in four parts. The first part is public health and the practices. So more at the individual level, the practices of the world's faith traditions, thinking about religious practices that happen um, daily, religious practices that happen weekly or annual or, or even once in a lifetime, like circumcision, 
or different puberty rites of practices in African religious traditions. Then the second um, part is religion and the history of public health. So looking at the context of how religion in a social institutional way um, really was an important part of addressing the social good at the same time period that public health and public health practice was being formed. The third part is religion and public health across the life course. Um, so the particular chapters in that section are religion and reproductive health, um, religion and physical health from childhood to old age, and then religion, spirituality, and mental health. Um, the fourth part of the book is religion and public health across the globe. So looking more broadly, both at the scale and level of religion's influence as an institution, and also how it's been an important part of the mission field, medical mission field, um, and aligned with um, uh, religious commitments and origins and motivations of health and development organizations around the world. The fifth part is religion and three public health challenges of our time, both HIV, AIDS, influenza pandemics, and Alzheimer's. So I think you'll appreciate both the distinctiveness of Emory in its unique ways of building on the strengths of its religious studies, um, theological school, um, and its way of thinking about the role of religion at multiple levels in the lives of individuals and societies as a social determinant of um, public health. So a bit about um, things that would be of interest to you to give you a, a perspective on both faculty and types of courses in different parts of the university that, con that can contribute to your learning experience here. Um, should you choose to be a part of the certificate or even if you're not um, um, following the requirements for the certificate. I've highlighted um, three of the courses that are in the lighter blue. These are the core courses for the certificate. You would choose one of these. Um, they're distinctive, each of them. Uh, my course um, at Candler, which is the CST, Candler School of Theology, um, are the, uh, the acronym for, for the theological school here is more of a leadership practice oriented course. Um, Dr. Joyce Flukiger, who's in the Emory College in the Department of Religion there, is, um, has an anthropological or cultural framing of um, health and healing. And then Dr. Eidler, who's at the Laney Graduate School and um, also um, in the college, um, teaches a course in religion and public health that's very focused on um, more through the lens of her work as a sociologist um, and as an epidemiologist, sort of the, the research and, and uh, uh, findings around the links between religion and public health. So um, to give you an idea of some work that students have done in the past, um, I've selected a few, um, want to point out a few of the slides, a few of the theses, that, just to give you an idea of ways that students have formed both around their interest, their perhaps a global field experience, or some research that they've done locally. Um, one of these was the impact of religion in relation to stigma and access to HIV services for key populations in Kenya. Another, the third one down, trust in faith-based HIV AIDS care, um, looking at the importance of uninterruptible courage. Um, as a part of that, ways of understanding trust in faith-based healthcare settings. Further down, um, prophecy and gender instability, a queer reading of um, Hosea's marriage metaphor. So this would be more likely from the religious studies, theological, um, as well as um, uh, cultural theory and, and sexuality um, studies um, orientation. Um, just below that, you'll see one um, entitled The Hidden Truth, The Role of Religion in Intimate Partner Violence in South Asian in Immigrant Communities. There are many more, but this is a sampling just to give you an idea of some of the possibilities and diversity of ways of thinking about 
um, and your own scholarship in the future around religion and health. And now to the nitty gritty of the certificate. It's a university wide certificate, not one that's particular to Rollins and designed within the depths of Rollins, but like the religion, um, excuse me, like the um, health and human rights certificate, it's university wide. Um, it is shaped um, within to fit the existing requirements for degree seeking students. So it's not additional requirements, but fits within what already exists as your degree um, requirements. But to give you um, both learning opportunities and a structure um, for an interdisciplinary perspective um, and resources, academic resources, for you to analyze the way in which faith understood as constituted by a set of religious and spiritual beliefs and practices, and how they may contribute to the promotion or inhibition of health of persons and communities from various religious and spiritual traditions. All of the scholarship here both examines both religion, how religion contributes to the health of individuals and to the health of the public, but also ways to understand it more deeply in ways that it's a barrier or limits um, the health of individuals or the health of the public. And then secondly, um, the way in which um, sort of understanding, um, giving you opportunities to understand um, uh, perspectives in the way that religion, health, and their respective structures impact persons, communities, in larger systems and influence uh, public policy and institutional practices. So how religion functions as an institution and a, as a social force in the um, uh, impacting the health of the public. Um, right now, both Candler, though originally the nursing school was part of this, but right now it's primarily the Candler School of Theology and the School of Public Health here that are participating in the certificate program. Candler students have an opportunity to get a certificate out of their studies, but helping them bridge to um, courses here at Rollins. Um, so the key components of their certificate are taking one of three of the core courses that I described previous. They're each um, three credit hour courses. Um, attendance um, at a, a sort of orientation reception that we'll be having um, in a couple of weeks, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, and then um, completing your um, integrative paper, your thesis or capstone project that focuses, um, it's focused around a research or evaluation or scholarship question linking um, religion and health. Elective courses, the equivalent to nine hours, um, and we strongly recommend um, at least one, preferably two of those courses being taken outside of your discipline um, to give you a different lens and way of thinking about um, the health of individuals and the, and the public. Then your practice, your practicum or field education component in, in have, it, have that be focused on the opportunity to explore the practice of religion and health but also in a way that fits the requirements in the particular department um, that you're enrolled in. And then lastly, participation in university-wide um, lectures and seminars that we have throughout the year in religion and health. My uh, email address and my phone number um, is located at the bottom of this slide, but you'll find me um, with the, the, the um, ID of M-K-I-S-E-R. So um, how do you enroll? Um, at Rollins, um, we recommend that the enrollment decision, you should make that no later than the spring registration when you're registering in the spring, the year before graduation. So you do this in, in consultation with your advisor and with me if, if you would like support in making that decision. Um, and then enrollment and completion forms are available, will be available as the site gets um, reconstructed, um, the Religion and Public Health um, Collaborative Emory.org website. Um, certificate completion form should be completed by April 1st, the year of your graduation. So that's when you will be able to um, uh, demonstrate your, your coursework, your practicum field experience, as well as your thesis or capstone 
have, have met the requirements um, um, for the certificate. Again, my information is at the bottom of this slide, um, but I think you'll find me easily um, in the Rollins system, as well as have an opportunity to meet me in an upcoming um, reception that we'll be having on the 13th. These are the kinds of events that you will um, be invited to that we host throughout the year in religion and public health, um, beginning with a reception on the 13th, um, where faculty and students from across the university are invited to come. Um, we'll be asking um, students, both currently enrolled in the certificate, dual degree students, as well as doctoral students to speak about their experiences here. It's a great time to um, be connected and sort of feel like you're part of this interdisciplinary network of scholars um, here at Emory. We'll be having roundtable discussions um, and we're in the midst of planning um, different lecture series that um, one we know will be public health, religion and ethics oriented. Um, um, I will be hosting informal interdisciplinary advisement discussions, sort of peer group ones, both um, once, twice a month, once at the noon hour and once at the end of the day to make sure we can, uh, I can make myself available um, and also kind of create an environment where you learn from other students um, their, their discoveries um, across the bridge, as we say. Um, that traverses, um, uh, that links the School of Public Health with the rest of the university, um, religion, theology, um, sociology, and other faculty that in, in course locations that hopefully you will um, um, be venturing forth to engage in. Um, we have a listserv um, for the community of scholars. Um, Susan Landsgroner um, maintain, is the project coordinator for the Religion and Health Collaborative, and um, she is your go-to person for getting on the listserv. Um, her uh, email address is slandsk at emory.edu, um, and she will be, of course, at the um, uh, scholars reception, and we'll have a sign up sheet there as well. Um, please don't hesitate if, if um, you can only remember my email address and aren't able to come to the reception, um, send me an email and make sure that um, we get your name um, in the system so that you find out about these events and can, and can stay linked in learning with the others. This is the invitation um, to the uh, Community of Scholars Reception, Religion and Public Health will be held um, Wednesday, September 13th um, from 5.30 to 7 in the Claudia Nance Rollins Building on the 8th floor in the uh, Clayman Room. Um, I look forward to meeting you then, um, if not another time, um, and I hope you are able to join us there where you'll get to meet other people um, who are adventurous and courageous in bridging um, uh, their learning and future practice um, at the intersection of religion and public health. Thank you all.